Hi everyone, it's Autumn. So today I want to talk about the real reason or the fundamental core reason why we feel so just terrible and confused and hurt and lost sometimes after a relationship with a narcissist and after enduring emotional narcissistic abuse. There's a lot of reasons, of course, that we go over in the red flags in terms of what narcissists do, the ability that they have in creating a lack of trust in ourselves after the relationship and sometimes even during the relationship. This, the way in which the tools that they use to manipulate like gaslighting and so on, create a disenfranchised feeling within ourselves. An inability to trust our own perspective, an inability to even trust our perspective of the people we love and who we give our love to, if they're worthy or not. Because for all of us, at the beginning of the relationship or when we met the narcissist, If they were a friend or a colleague, we trusted them. This is how we became close to them. And we intuitively, or innately rather, wanted to be giving and forgiving and compassionate and felt as though they were worthy of it to some degree or another. Although in retrospect, we look back and see that so much of what we thought we perceived was really manufactured by the narcissist, right? They manufactured signs and clues and images to us that built them into a person who should be trusted or a person who was whatever it was that we were looking for or whatever it was that we individually would give freely to because they ask a lot of questions and they listen very closely. And when you approach another person in this way, in a very very rational, logical way, of course, you, you can get a lot done. The problem is, not the problem, I don't think it's a problem, but the issue, rather, is with a narcissist versus a quote unquote normal emotionally normal person, and I use normal in quotes, there's no real normal, but somebody who has a conscience, has a, um, has empathy, has a true self that they're in touch with. But when we're with a narcissist, it's very different in the way that we feel the reciprocation of our love, of, of our, um, giving, but we approach it from a perspective of what is what we perceive the world to be normal what we perceive the what we perceive to be real because if somebody acts a certain way we perceive that it means something because normal quote unquote emotionally normal people it does for us it does so if somebody you know marries you we perceive this to mean that they want to be our partner and spend our lives together and work on the relationship and support one another because that's what emotionally normal people and our perspective believes if someone's going to marry us, right? So, okay, but there's a core, something very underlining all of these things. And it has nothing to do with your narcissist. It has nothing to do even with, really with um, a relationship per se or love, or friendship, or even trust. Yes, on the higher layers, the more conscious layers, these things are hurtful, and this is why we feel hurt, and we feel lost and confused. But there's something very core. And what it is, is that narcissists live. And I'm going to go say energy. You can interpret energy to me, whatever it means to you. Either it be energy in a more esoteric way like or literal energy like 
in terms of scientific energy because we all are energy and we know that our brains function on frequency waves, literally like electric frequency waves, or energy as in like what we say, you know, what we do, the, the, the way we create an environment because everybody has an energy field in all of these ways or in, you know, however you see energy to be. Even if it's very, very uh, strictly looked at, at in terms of what we say, what we do, how we act, how we treat other people, the, the, that creates an energy field. Okay, when we are around other people, there's the cliche saying, you are the company that you keep. And there's something so very true about this on an innate level. Two women that spend a lot of time together physically will their menstrual cycles will sync, right? Because biologically, the energy, the frequency of our bodies, our brains, and so on, actually start to sync to each other. And and this is both on an esoteric kind of level all the way down to a scientific level and everything in between. And what happens with narcissists? Narcissists live at a very low, low frequency energy level. They have to. I mean, come on. When you base your entire life, the way you live every day, the environment you create, the mentality you have, the words you say, the the words you think in your own head, the motivations that you have for your life, when they're rooted in things like anger and hate and, and getting ahead and control and power and manipulating others to get what you want and lying and and lying to yourself even because they do that creates a very low negative energy in your life it 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 creates a low negative energy in terms of everything that you do is tainted by this narcissists none of them are really happy they're not I've never met one that is truly actually happy. They'll put on a front, but pretend to be because they're they're playing actor and they know happy people attract other people. But the real energy in which they live is one that's negative and low. And we, on the other hand, or people that are not narcissists or sociopaths, tend to live in a little higher state. You know, there's a big range between individuals. But by far and large, most of us, we find goodness and feeling natural in things like love and friendship and honesty, compassion, empathy, forgiveness, partnership, camaraderie. And this is our natural state. This is what this is the frequency, if you want to say energy, that we exist at. Or even on a superficial level, or more just regular energy, if you will, of the words we say and the ways we act. We're more forgiving. That creates more positive energy around us. But the problem is that when we're around a narcissist, their energy tends to override ours. Why? Because narcissists, they're not going to change. They're not going to meld around them. They're very... They're very static. We, on the other hand, are more malleable. People who, by nature of having a forgiving, compassionate, empathetic, compromising, diplomatic mentality and and personality and persona, we are going to be more adaptable to changing to someone else. It's just inherent in those types of traits. And so we end up, what do we end up doing? We end up adapting and changing more towards into the alignment of the narcissist. Because look it, there are probably things that you did and said that, that it, with the narcissist because they hurt you so bad. Because you were drugged down to their level. You were drugged down to their level of thinking, of their level of being, of their level of acting and behaving. Really, when you look back, there are probably times where you started acting in ways that were contrary to how you've probably ever acted before to both the narcissist and other people in your life as you were drugged down into this this lower negative energy. 
field, kind of. Saying words and, and look, when the when somebody's a narcissist and they have a deep hatred towards you that they're covertly spewing onto you, they hate you because you love them. They hate themselves so much covertly within their false self or their true self that they don't even have any real conscious recognition of that they automatically hate people who care about them because they're, they hate, that's how much they hate themselves or whatever because they're jealous of you because you're not giving them what they want or you are giving them what they want. They'll hate you for it because there must be something wrong with you if you're, you know, there's all this subconscious bullshit going on within them. But the bottom line is that all of the way that they think and the way they behave and the way that they act is, dr- is just drama and deceit and lies and, excuse me, anger. And these are very low negative energy way of being. And you live your life from that place. You start to find yourself when you start to, to be drugged by the narcissist. Because how can you not be? When someone's treating you in certain ways, when you know you're being even subconsciously, we may not even be consciously aware during the course of the relationship or the vast majority course of the relationship of the ways that we're being exploited, how we're being lied to. But all of us had probably some little intuition that would pop up here and there. Right? The narcissist might be cheating. And there's little things that come up that don't make sense to us. But they're very, they're not concrete proof or anything like that. They're just little passing moments, right, of, of feelings and, and little moments of things they did or said that were a little off. And our intuition's going off and saying they're cheating, they're cheating, they're lying, they're lying. And we may confront it and they will lie and say they'll turn it around and they will come back with, well, no, you have the trust issues. I'm not doing anything. That's your issues. And again, because the inherent person we are, our personality traits will make us susceptible to saying, wait a minute, because we don't, we don't, we're not selfish inherently. I mean, we're all selfish, you know, we have to be, but we're not maniacally selfish and we want to be a good person to a partner. We don't want to have issues and we don't want to be, you know, so on and so forth. So we start taking it on. And when someone does that, you're dragged into unknowingly into low negative energy. You've now denied your intuition, which is a part, a core part of a person living at their natural energy state. To deny your intuition, to not listen to it, to do things that are contrary to it. And intuition isn't even some like esoteric nonsense. It's a real thing. The vagus nerve runs between our stomach and our brain and it's developed over, you know, thousands and millions of years of, 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 you know, humans and early, you know, early humans to now that all animals have. That's why the gazelle doesn't need to go up to a lion and get real close to it and say, are you going to eat me? Right? The, the fucking gazelle just knows. Its intuition just looks over from far, far, far away. How? Baby animals often know predators before they're even alerted. So they're taught by their parents, but sometimes not even. They just know. That's intuition. It's a, just a knowledge. And the number one thing that your intuition is always doing is trying to keep you safe. Yes, if we have a lot of issues, sometimes our subconscious can confuse our intuition with being hypervigilant to things that are not scary or, or threatening and, and make them seem to be. And that's where PTSD comes in. But by far and large, the basic, basis of our intuition is to keep us safe and to alert us of things that will potentially destroy us or hurt us or be um, contrary to our survival. And like, let's be honest, anyone who's gone through narcissistic abuse knows that a narcissist or a sociopath is literally contrary to our survival. They exploit our emotions and our, men- our mental states to the point where we can't function as well. We can no longer partner up easily. It's a lot of work to get through it. You can if you want to, but some people never do. It could destroy you. To be, you know, to, to have a family and have a partnership as humans is to be safe. It is. 
We're tribal people, communal people, and animals. And when the narcissist destroys our ability to do that, it's rendered us less successful to have innate survival. N- never mind all the other things, because if they steal our money, or they ruin our credit, or they, you know, on and on and on, legally, you know, say lies about us so that we're in legal troubles, this is contrary to our survival. That's our intuition coming off. So there are probably times where that happened, where we were then either, we either ignored it for the sake of continuing the relationship because we couldn't let go, couldn't let go because we love them, because they painted a false illusion that we were a partnership, that we could trust them, that we love them. And also the trauma bond happens where there's tons of chemicals in our brains that keep us addicted to somebody. That's, I'll do another video sometime on that. But remember, at the core, what you're feeling after you're with a narcissist and you're going through narcissistic abuse, especially at the beginning of it, that real, just intense feeling. Yes, it's, it's PTSD partly and trauma and so on and chemicals in the brain and, and I, I, there's a lot of things going on, sure. But the bottom line is, the core of it all is that you have now been drugged down into a negative place of being that isn't natural for you. That isn't your natural state. When you are not aligned with the thoughts and, and, the, and, the, and the behaviors and the feelings and emotions and just overall energy of your life that is, that is inherent to how you were born or raised, you're not going to feel okay with yourself. You're just not. This is why the narcissist can't raise up to a higher energy level. It does not matter how much you try to love them or how much you give to them or what opportunities you give them to become a more enlightened person, a more loving person, to... to, to raise their frequency, raise their thoughts, you know, be comforted by someone else's love. They can't do it because that, because of the way that they were born, how their brain is constructed or, and, or how they were raised in early childhood, how the core of who they are is structured. They can't do it. They don't feel natural. They don't feel okay. I mean, and, um, they don't feel they don't feel okay when they're in an unnatural energy state, when they're thinking happy thoughts, when they're around happy, truly happy people. That's why they'll ruin truly happy people. That's why often they like to target people who are the most kind and giving and happy. That energy state for them is so unnatural that all they do, this is why they avoid intimacy like the plague, right? It's so un natural and, and, and unorganic to their innate state of being that they don't feel okay. They don't feel like themselves when they're in a higher energy level of living, either it be through, you know, kinder, better, higher thinking thoughts or, you know, just, just being surrounded by people who are, they don't feel that good. And that's why we don't feel good. When we're going through a divorce with the narcissist, we're literally having to behave in a similar way that they act, or else we will be eaten alive, or, or else they will manipulate us further, they will ruin us, or try to ruin us. So we have to start doing things. We have to start attacking. We have to start being angry and living in a state of hate much similar to how they do. And now, presto, we have just been pulled into, down into their energy field and their state of being. And it's not natural to us. Okay, so what can you do about it? First is understanding where that really bad feeling that you're getting in your life every day all day, every second of every day is coming from. And it's coming from this. If you're going through like a divorce, you kind of don't have a choice but to lower yourself down to their energy level. Otherwise, you will be eaten alive, unfortunately. You have to do sneaky things or things that may be contrary to your organic state of being, 
or how you used to be. Don't worry, you'll go back to the other your old self eventually. So if you're in the divorce process, for example, just get through it. And if you are feeling that sense of anger and hate that is making you uncomfortable, where you know that this isn't your normal self and this is really what's... Just know that you do have to go through it to get to the other side. I think that there are a lot of things that we can do to raise, help, counteract how we feel. Um, associations can raise our energy. Finding new associations to things that have been replaced. Like the narcissists will actually associate their, their bad thoughts or their you know, feelings like you're not good enough, um, low self-esteem, putting someone down, hurting somebody, um, making them feel not good enough, worthy enough. These are all low energy levels of being. And they have probably taken things, normal everyday things, or love or trust and associated you to feel these negative feelings. So we want to reassociate. There's a lot of stuff you can do by yourself or in therapy. Um, I have a ton of exercises that worked with clients I've been working with and myself. Um, actual frequencies, listening to sounds can help raise literally the, the way in which your brain is functioning. And, and I'm going to talk about this in another video, but with the trauma, kind of think of like some of your emotions and thoughts, the neural pathways are being kind of almost inhibited from, from making connections with parts of the brain and the prefrontal cortex in particular that are, that are needed for rationalization and logical thinking that help you get over the trauma. And so we're not, we need to find ways to reconnect and re kind of start those neural pathways between different parts of the brain frequencies. There's there's a reason why that Tibetan monks and other monks throughout the throughout thousands of years have used these bowls, the Tibetan singing bowls, because these frequency waves literally bring our brains to a higher level of being. They connect all parts of the brain and create allow blood flow and neural pathways to form. Because in order to be able to be fully integrated and process things like trauma, our brain needs to be able to work in unison with itself, all, part, all parts of it. So there are a lot of other things that you can do. I'm going to actually work on, I'm working on like a small, like um, kind of, I don't dare I say book, like an ebook almost for my clients. And maybe I'll put that out publicly. Um, I've had some really great success with like maybe a dozen or so exercises and therapy models that have just worked so awesome. Um, and I'll do a video on some of them as well. Because I think that I know it's easy to get stuck down in that lower field of energy, of being, of hate or anger or rage or hurt. But um, it's not nor if it's not normal for you, if it's not your natural state of being, you're not going to feel okay. You're not going to feel okay. And until you can raise it back up and so there are things there the the idea I know it seems hokey pokey and I get a little bit roll my eyes sometimes at certain things too but it is amazing what actually focusing on that um getting you know working with a good life coach or therapist that knows what they're doing especially with narcissistic abuse because it's very particular or um with trauma but especially narcissistic abuse and using different tactics for yourself in your daily life and actually taking the time every day to invest in yourself. And I know it sounds cheesy, but it's true. It will help you get better faster. The more that you go into an automatic state of being, just letting yourself go down into anger, hate, rage, hurt, pain, confusion, frustration, feeling unloved, having your self-esteem damaged, all these things. The further you go into that hole, not only are you making that your normal state of being and you're normalizing it, and there will be a feedback loop where the more you feel that way, the more you'll want to feel that way. Just like the feedback loop of trauma bonding. The more chemicals you, the more emotional intensity and chaos and 
disruption and dysfunction that was happening in your life, the more chemicals were released, the more you were hyperadrenalized, the more your adrenal glands released stress uh, hormones, and those things became addictive. So that's part of the reason why you stayed with your narcissist, because you became addicted to them, literally, kind of, right? So anyway, I'll make some more videos on this kind of stuff. Um, I really have a lot of empathy and compassion and for every, anybody that's going through the, the end of a narcissistic relationship, if you're in it still, if you're getting out of it, if you're recovering from it, it is very, very confusing and hurtful. And being at that low energy level of being and getting a, the way that you were living with the narcissist for so many months or years or whatever it was, you know, can really bring you so far away from the person who you truly are. And the farther we get from that, the more unnatural we feel and just the more bad we feel. And the more bad we feel, the less likely we are to get back to our natural state. And then there's this feedback loop again. And you, we have to break the cycle. So anyway, if you need any help with anything, feel free to email me. My email is um, lifecoachautumnblake at gmail.com. And I always am willing to take on new clients. If, even if you can't pay, I can work with you and possibly take on a few more clients pro bono because I know a lot of people were financially destroyed after the narcissistic abuse. Um, if you can pay, um, I do lower my rates for anybody that's going through this in particular. Since I started working particular with narcissistic abuse clients after going through it myself, I've, I still keep my corporate life coaching clients and I get paid well through that. So um, I'm trying to balance it trying to not look at money as meaningful because you know my ex-narcissist husband his money was everything and I don't want to be like him again I don't want him to drag me into his to me living your life based on this is just a quick rant for me for me living your life based on money and having money trump like the well-being of other people is living at a low energy level or state of being and my narcissist lived like that, and he drug me down into it. He would shame me and criticize me into anything I did. I, I, the majority of our relationship, I was doing two things, and still am. I'm a violinist and a violin teacher. I have a private studio, some great students. I've been doing it for 12 years. I owned a huge music school for about eight years. And I'm a life coach. And... I took on, as a life coach, I didn't take on any pro bono clients because I never was really contacted by people before that needed it. But I took on quite a few pro bono violin students. I charge $75 an hour for violin lessons. It's expensive. And I know it. Now, you know, I've, I've invested a lot of money, hundreds of thousands into my education, and I've been doing it for many years, and that's what I'm worth, but it's still very expensive. I take on, I've been contacted by single moms who want to give this opportunity to their children. Single moms have two children that make 22000 a year. How can you get by? And these kids that are in lower-income communities often need something like music more even, something positive in their life, to not let them go down the wrong road. And I t would take on pro bono, if you will, you know, free, give them a scholarship, quote unquote, violin lessons, or very low cost. And I have always, I've had about five students. Uh, at the time, I think I had eight. It was a bit, eight hours a week, plus travel. I mean, it was a significant investment, don't get me wrong. And uh, we were by no means wealthy, but we did okay. He would just shame me, criticize me, and make me into like I'm some kind of like I'm cheapening myself for doing it. And see, that was his low energy level frequency. I am sorry. But when you are a person who sees money as the end all be all, that you put money before people's well being and caring, I understand money is necessary in life but that's not me and so 
I started kind of almost being dragged into that because I was embarrassed and I was shamed and then I started thinking maybe there's something wrong with me and I, I you know no as after I got the, out of the marriage I was like forget that I'm a nice person this is who I am he's <laughs> disordered and I'm sure there are a lot of things that you can look back at with your ex so anyway I hope everybody's well much love namaste